Hey everybody, it's Eric and Roy, and today we're gonna to be talking about the Trigicon SRO, which actually stands for... I think it's Specialized Reflex Optic, is what it stands for. That's um, what I guessed too, but yeah. uh, you know, it's all off of their website, so who knows, it could be anything. Exactly. So. Um, all right, so guys, we're gonna be talking about the SRO. It's a pretty awesome optic so far, but primarily it's used on handguns. I think it's what it's built for. Yeah, primarily handguns, and I think it was... I think it was actually originally advertised as more of a competition style uh, optic, uh, a go fast optic. Yeah. So, so let me tell you, if you want to go fast, SRO. SRO is the way to go. So I'm not going to spoil it, but we can end this episode right now. <laughs> yeah, right now. If, All right, if, that's if, it. It's good for going if, fast. If speed is your goal, yeah, the SRO is definitely going to get you there for sure. Um, so I mean, you and I have been running it primarily in two and a half. And two five. And a, yeah, so two and a half MOA and yeah. five MOA. We haven't got our hands on a one MOA yet. Yeah. Uh, the SRO has been a little hard to come by. As of most recently, as we're recording this episode, they're starting to appear again. Right. Uh, but there for a while, they were definitely relatively very difficult to come find. I think the first couple that we got our hands on were five MOAs. Okay. So we picked those up. And yeah. that's what you're rocking on your G45 right now is a five MOA. Yeah. And I have a G, I have a five MOA on my Glock 19 and the 2.5 MOA is on the 19X right now. So, okay. Yeah. All right. So, uh, talking been, about talking you, about as far as the let's size. talk about you switching over to Cicada, you toad. Oh, I don't I don't know about that yet. Yeah, we'll talk. About that. <laughs> we'll good. talk. We'll talk about that. Yeah. Very good. Uh, I'm, I would like to. I would honestly like to make the full transition. I'd like to come out of the closet, and uh, and make the transition as Staccato. I was about to say you, you explained the come out of the closet part yeah. real quick. Right? <laughs> exactly. Uh, uh. So yeah, I mean. As far as the SRO, it is a go fast optic. Is it? Um, it gets a little bit of a bad rap because I know the internet doesn't say that it's duty proven. What does that mean? What does that mean? To I be don't duty really proven? know what duty proven actually means because I mean, at the end of the day, anything can fail at any point in time. Uh, we've had optics out there, for instance, the Holosyn 509T, what the internet world would say is a proven duty style optic. Has it really? Yeah, I mean, oh. if you if you read out there on the forums, you jump on Reddit and you watch some of the other YouTube yeah. channels that might be out there. There's a lot of guys that have beat up on it pretty mm -hmm. good, and it, and it's and it's holding true to those guys. I know we have not had the best of luck with yeah. it. Uh, a lot of the other guys that we shoot around with out there at JTAC Ranch that we train with. Speaking of which, guys, if you're looking for training, jump mm -hmm. in over at JTACRanch.com, but also head over to BarrelandHatchet.com. We are going to have our schedule live as far as what we're going to be teaching. Uh, we're going to have a red dot, red dot fundamentals class. Yep. Baseline red uh, dot. Baseline yep. red dot. And we're also going to have a scope carbine yeah. class. So me and Eric uh, spent a lot of time behind rifles, as you know, that have scopes on them mm -hmm. and work at distance. So we are going to be doing that. So check out uh, JTACRanch.com if you want to train, but also check out barrelandhatchet.com yep. and we'll have our class scheduled up there. To include also, uh, the benefit a red dot gives you is being able to aim with night vision. So we will also be offering baseline night vision classes as well as uh, flashlight classes for rifle and pistol. So it'd be pistol and rifle, flashlight, or everything we call the illuminated yep. night fighter. Illumin yep, illuminated night fighter. Yep. Uh, those classes are gonna be offered uh, where we'll be currently teaching is at JTAC Ranch until we get some other ranges on board. We are working at that. So if you guys have a range in your area that you know that would love to have us there to train yep. at, hit us up, send us a message, jump over on our website. There's a really, really cool messaging app there. Yeah. Um, in, we can you're you're chatting with me eric or tyler yeah for sure so yeah. but yeah back over to the sro though um i mean yeah it's it's it gets a little bit of a bad rap from not necessarily being a duty proven i know myself i've been running one for a while you have the one that's on yours now mm -hmm. probably what at least a good six months probably uh if i, I would guess. almost say a little bit longer yeah, probably um, yeah yeah i guess six months yeah. you have put a lot of rounds through it though yeah. so like yeah i mean it's six months worth of weekly use multiple times a week mostly daily yeah mostly I would say daily daily, yeah. daily um mine i've had for probably pretty close to a year uh ben over at wiseman company i know he's had one for several years yeah and I, uh, he's I've, actually the yeah. one that kind of turned me onto it and yeah. said hey why don't you pick up an sro mm -hmm. give it a shot instead of i was looking for another pistol optic instead of buying an rmr and i've had some bad luck with the hollison 509t lately yeah. so <clears throat> i was going to pick up an rmr and i went with the sro mm -hmm. and then eric was like dude i gotta have one yeah yeah so. it, it's it's too it's too in terms of, uh, I would say the benefit of it is it being a circle. 
So forever we've been shooting out of what square and yeah. like weird shaped windows where it's got like a square but like mm -hmm. a rounded top. So like the RMR type window, the 509 or the 507. Yeah, the RMR type window is kind of like a square, but it's got like a U in the top of it, kind of yeah. like a know, like a little dip in it. Mm -hmm. uh, the 509, you're looking through a TV, you yeah. know, type type thing. You're looking for yeah. double pane uh, planes as far as glass ones yeah. goes. Uh, same thing with the Acro, Zacro P2, the Steiner MPS. Mm -hmm. Um, it the, the SRO with that big round open window it's almost like you don't have any glass there it's yeah. just like the dot is just there yeah it's, like, uh, it's huge so I mean like that's something that you can definitely see a huge improvement is you're looking through a circle which if you shoot red dot optics on your ARs it's always a circle so yeah. like you really are kind of for some reason, I guess the shape of a circle helps you with your eye, like being able to see something. I know for myself it does. That yeah. kind of dials me in a little that bit. That was though. something that I definitely noticed with the SRO is how fast I was able to pick up the dot and how, how it almost kind of just works with my body. I, yeah. I don't even know how to, how, yeah. how do you put that? Yeah. I know as far as being duty proven um, and what we've kind of, what we've put it through out on the range, we really honestly have had no issues with it. Yeah. Uh, we've, we've used it a quite a bit, a lot out there at the ranch and the mm -hmm. ranch is definitely known for killing optics. We shoot a lot in a lot of different conditions. We are in middle of Florida, which it rains a lot, especially during the summer. Oh yeah. So they've been wet, they've had sand in them, yep. they've had pretty much almost everything that you can think of thrown at them, and we haven't broke one. Now we haven't yeah. intentionally dropped them. Yeah. We haven't done uh, a drop test on it. I haven't done it. a drop test on it. Uh, honestly, I don't plan on doing a drop test on it. Yeah. I haven't ever done a drop test on any of my optics. Yep. Uh, we're, we're not the drop test guys. So to include the 509. Yeah, include the 509. Yep. Um, we, we, we're not going to do a drop test on it. I have no intentions on intentionally breaking it. If it breaks under usage, yeah. that's fine. Okay, yeah. you know, I'll deal with that later on. And with the water thing, like, I obviously understand it's an open emitter. So anytime you are shooting with an open emitter and you're running any time of water, stuff like that, you run the risk of that getting that starburst pattern on, if you get a water droplet on the dot. That's yeah. just the nature of the business when it comes to an open open emitter. Yeah. If you guys are looking at the SRO, I'm going to tell you around where I would highly recommend it also is just in pure everyday concealment. Yeah. Like, yeah. I mean, it is just so fast, mm -hmm. especially from concealment. Super fast. Yeah. And it's not a huge, it's not, it's not as big as you feel, especially now guys are running Acros mm -hmm. and Steiners yeah. and mailboxes, mailboxes on top of it again. <laughs> again, the yeah, post office is getting out there. One of the things that I like about it is the top load of the battery versus oh, the yeah. traditional RMR mm -hmm. where you have to remove your optical. Yeah. Now I'm, you know, we are constantly checking our zero on our optics. Yep. It's it's probably every two weeks we're you know we're going out and putting it on paper mm -hmm. and confirming zero to make yep. sure our stuff. We're doing what you should do as a responsible shooter. owner yeah. shooter yeah. when it comes to any kind of optics. You should be checking your zero relatively often. Mm -hmm. uh, so we do that with the RMRs and the SROs regardless, but it is nice that you do have that top load. If you need to quickly get a battery in, you're not having to break out a whole bunch of tools. You mm -hmm. you, you grab a penny out of your center console yep. or a nickel and you pop it open and you yeah. throw a CR123 in it. Or Usually not CR123, CR2032. That's, like, that's a big right battery. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's uh, a big battery for that thing. <laughs> uh, the I, I would definitely say that with the SRO, like for example, I carry an RMR on my my Glock 19, which I carry, you know, obviously just because it's there. But anytime I pick that optic up, I'm always like, God, man, I wish yeah. it was an SRO. Like that's a common thread that you'll get yeah. once you shoot an SRO. You're always gonna go. I wish I had an SRO. Yeah, I, I am now currently in that process of any pistol that I own mm -hmm. is gonna have an SRO. SRO, SRO, in it. SRO yeah. on it. So, yeah. what's uh, the footprint on it? Is it an RMR? It's an RMR footprint. RMR footprint. Yeah, so it's very common. So if you guys are already running RMRs, you won't have to worry about changing anything around. Yeah, it does have a couple of modes in it where you can kind of lock it in and lock it out. Um, for like everyday carry, if you want to lock it in at a certain brightness setting, mm -hmm. if you want to you know where you can quick quickly adjust it you can still do that I, I don't have mine locked I like to actually be able to tune my brightness up and down yeah. with it uh, one of the other cool things about it though is its ability under night vision yeah so it does have a couple night vision mm -hmm. settings in it yep. and I'm gonna tell you that is super super clean as far it as is. shooting passive so uh, it yeah. is cleaner than RMR it's cleaner than the, the the acro in my yeah. opinion um, the Steiner MPS yes. is cleaner than all of them shooting passive behind it yeah. is definitely really nice I so. think the biggest thing that you you can look through mm -hmm. any optic even if it's like night night vision capable mm -hmm. And people are like, well, what's the difference? The difference is usually going to be the tint of the glass. So usually the tint of your glass, if it's not night vision capable, um, it's going to be almost like you're looking into a, a complete circular black spot 
with a dot in it. So you can actually see through the glass and see through the window when you're aiming passively. So with the SRO, it's super, super clear. I can completely see the target through my window with my night vision while passively aiming versus like with, you know, some hollow suns that I didn't advertise as night vision capable, I would still be able to see the dot, but it would be a circle that was black yep. and yep. not actually seeing through the window. So understand if you're aiming passively and you're utilizing an enclosed emitter, you have two pieces of glass that you have to look through to be able to see that. Now you can do that when you're doing um, regular shooting under an, with an AR and doing it passive, but just understand the SRO makes it super, super simple, super easy. Yeah, you um, don't even, you do not see the housing or anything. Yeah. It's almost like, a, you know, just yeah. a dot there. Yeah, in front it's like of you. circular, like a tube of your yeah. goggles. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's actually very, very clear. Yeah. So. As far as the as far as the buttons, I think the one thing I do like, obviously Trigicon has had a pretty good track record with their buttons, is mm -hmm. it's not like a tiny little button, like it's a big giant button, yep. a lot of surface area. Yeah, and it's on both sides. <laughs> yes. You know, so you kinda know you can reach down into your holster from concealment mm -hmm. and know, okay, well if I need to click up like six clicks or yeah. a couple clicks or whatever yeah. for my daytime or my nighttime. Exactly. You can go up and down yeah. just off of memorization. Yeah. Um, obviously check yourself out, make sure that you're good. But I do like that a yeah. lot. That, so kind of going back to the, the duty proven, I'm actually curious if you know what that means, like if you're in law enforcement or military that you I think, understand. I think it, I think it does. Have a to trial. Do. A yeah. It's a, it, I, true duty proven would be where they do do drop, drop tests test. on okay. from a certain height. Yeah. Um, and then for a few other things where, where they dunk it in water and right. different extreme temperature changes from, you know, like a freezing temperature to right. heating it back up immediately. Right. Does it, does it hold in that? Um, we haven't done any of that testing. The only testing that we've done is just mount it on a gun and just shoot the heck out of it. Yeah. Um, lots of rounds behind them. No, we, there's been no zero shift. Yeah. No zero shift. Um, haven't had any issues with, you know, glass breaking or anything like that. Yeah. We are shooting some comp pistols occasionally mm -hmm. here and there. Yeah. So there is a quite a bit of muzzle blast in front of it. Yeah. Um, no issues there. Uh, and then shooting, you know, pistols with ports, no issues there yeah. also. Um, but yeah, we haven't done a drop test on it. We haven't frozen it. We haven't what dumped was... it in water. I know it is, uh, I think it's like 10 feet, uh, yeah. three meters roughly is yeah. what it's waterproof to. Okay. So it is waterproof uh, to about 10 feet, 10 meters, um, which is good for us because we get caught in the rain a lot. A lot, a lot. Uh, yeah. Quite a bit. And that, so. as if something is like... And I don't run the hood on my safari land. I don't run, I don't run the... I Roy, why? Because I don't like the hood on it. So, so <laughs> man, you raised in the hood, but you don't like it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Friggin', so. uh, what is something that I feel like there was a uh, a thread that was going on about thing, something that was going wrong with the SRO, and I think was it the glass falling out or what? <sighs> That's a good question. I mean, I, I didn't read that, but yeah. uh, but I, I, you guys, if you know, down in the comments, educate people with it. Yeah. But I, I do recall something along those lines when they first issued it that they yeah. had that they may have had like a little recall or something. Yeah. Um, with the units that we've had so far, have been great. Nothing. And like I said, we yeah. have a total of I think four of them in our current yeah. possession. Yep. And all four of them have been great. No, no kind of issues. Very, very clean. Very, very crisp. I'm, I'm, I'm a huge fan of it. If you can't tell, yeah. And I plan on putting it on everything. If I make the transition over to staccato, um, it's gonna have an SRO you on dirty it. Dirty dog. <laughs> Freaking, uh, yeah. Staccato. Talking about MOA though. Um, I mean, so well, I shoot first, five our, MOA. Our, our first units that we got were five MOA. Yeah. Uh, and we just got the two point five probably about three months ago. Mm -hmm. Any, any issues with 5 So MOA? I haven't shot the 2.5. Uh, I've been shooting the 5 MOA completely. As far as making shots at distance, yeah. no issue. Like I can make shots at yeah. 100 yards, 75 yards. Yeah, and um, we've ran a uh, modified Elijah Dickinson drill where yeah. we're actually running it at 50 yards. Yeah. Um, and then tightening up, mm -hmm. you know, our hit hit factor yeah. um, a little bit, not just to just on paper looking for yeah. you know, Alpha Charlie yeah. type stuff. And with the five MOA, really no issues, right? I no, I haven't seen any issues. I I, I would just say it's probably just preference at that. Yeah, point. we get like, we get that question a lot. Should yeah. I go with a one MOA, a two point five, mm -hmm. or a five MOA, or? Honestly, I probably wouldn't go any bigger than yeah. five MOA. Yeah. I know you can get an RMR in like a six point five MOA. Right. What I will say though about the 5 MOA that I really enjoy is you have to think about the platform and its purpose and what distances realistically you're going to be engaging at, right? So like as far as 40, 50, 60 yards, it's perfectly good. 100 yards even, I, be, I make, make, make tit hit, make tits. Make, hit, <laughs> <laughs> make hits on target. I did not know you had that ability yeah. to do that. Yeah, I can make those. I'm not a plastic shirt. Anyway, there. So I can make hits on target at 100 yards on steel and not have an issue. Um, but the good thing about it is having a nice dot that's 
immediately I, get, I can pick it up super fast because it's nice and big. Yeah, yeah. It definitely is clean and crisp, no doubt about it. Yeah. Uh, 5 MOA, I've been running that, really no issues. Mm -hmm. I have a 2.5 MOA. I haven't really seen it gives me a ton of advantage. I think it's going to come down to, at the end of the day, what you train with sure. and what you become accustomed to. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Freaking the dog. The dog, dog walking around. <laughs> 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 Trying to find her, her way in here. Yeah, so. Freaking uh, toad. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, I mean, I don't think, as far as the SRO, we haven't seen any issues with it. If you have seen issues with it, let us know. Maybe it could be something that's like an earlier generation. Um, but as far as as price let's talk about price point real quick yeah price point got a little crazy there for a while because yeah. they were so hard to come by and yeah. i know people were listing them for like 650 and yep. 700 dollars yeah. uh be patient if you're interested in buying one because there's no reason that they should cost that much money i have heard though that the five moa are more common to find yes the five moa are very common to find yeah. and generally speaking you're going to find it five moa probably around 500 bucks or yeah. so because they are so common yeah uh you may pay a little bit more for a one moa and a 2.5 yeah. not that the cost is any different guys i sell these you know um, yeah. Um, they're going to be up on Barrel and Hatchet's website here real soon. Yeah. So uh, we'll be selling them also. And that's one of the other things that we're kind of doing as we're testing mm -hmm. product. And Stuff that we that we like, like. That yeah. we like yep. is going to go up on barrelandhatchet.com. So yep. where, where the ghost is, where our training classes are. Um, so we'll actually have some SROs up on there, uh, some RMRs up there. Yep. But the you're probably going to be in that 5 to 550 range. Yeah. Uh, you may yeah. get lucky every once in a while and pick one up for a little less than that in yeah. that 480, 490 range. Uh, 2.5s are a little more desirable, so a lot of shops are charging a little more money for them. Sure. Uh, street price, probably 600 bucks. Yeah. You know, uh, yeah. Uh, I wouldn't pay any more than that. Right. I, honestly, I probably wouldn't pay any more than five, 550. Yeah. Is where yeah. I would be at on it. So. And so if you do come to one of our night vision classes and you want to look through it or you come to our baseline red, red dot class with us, Come ask us. We'll you can definitely look through it. Try yeah, it. Try it out. Definitely. See what you think. Try it. We'll have demo. We have here. We're gonna plan on having demo units for guys to try out mm -hmm. with different things uh, here in the future too. If it's something that you like. Yeah. So. so. Anyways, that's pretty much the Trigicon SRO. Nothing too fancy, but <laughs> no, a pretty pretty easy episode for the most part. <laughs> yeah, um, exactly. Nothing uh, nothing bad for us to report back as of right now. Follow yeah. us on IG. Um, get down in the comments. Like I said, if you guys have had any kind of issues, but you know, continue following us on uh, on IG and social media, uh, and you know, jump over to our website and chat with us too, mm -hmm. and let us know what your issues may be, and we'll we'll update you if we yeah. run into one for yeah. sure. We'll definitely um, the the Hollison five hundred nine t were great when we first started running them yeah we got about a year into it yep. and that's where they started kind of failing us yeah uh, that's yep. where the issue came out uh, and if if we get it about a year into this and the same things happen by all means we'll guys, do an update we'll do an update on mm -hmm. it we're not telling you to go buy a product right that's not what we're here to do exactly we're telling you what has worked and then at some point in time if it does fail yeah we're going to report back to exactly you, so, and sure. so with that also like and subscribe it helps us out um the biggest thing comment our, all of our comment section has been super positive. Help share and pass on that knowledge in the comment section. And also, um, check out that schedule. And feel free to talk to us. Like, yeah, we love hearing definitely. from you guys. And guys, if you enjoy our content, head over to our website. That is the best way to support us. Yes. Okay? Uh, T-shirts. I know you've been asking for, for hats, hats. Son of a gun. I finally got confirmation. As this episode is being recorded, I finally got confirmation that hats will probably be about another two weeks. Nice. We will have our hats in. Eric, nice. you did not know that. Oh, great. Uh, that's, that's awesome. <laughs> great news. <laughs> as we're recording this episode, the email just came across on oh, my phone. Oh, nice. <laughs> so, that's yeah, we'll have hats. Uh, we have the Ghost Rig up yep. there. Ghost is up um, there. If you guys are looking for great product to pair with the Ghost, head over to wisemancompany.com. The XH harness is mm -hmm. phenomenal. That's what we prefer. That's what we highly recommend menu running yeah. with it and soon hopefully and maybe there might lunar be concepts has their wings too, yeah the wings really well. yeah so lunar concepts is asking about the wings you guys have been asking a lot hey how do i set this thing up yeah uh, the wings are going to be great for yeah. that so. yeah so anyways uh yeah pretty uh, much it right yep that's pretty much it <laughs> <laughs> we'll see you guys on the next episode thanks again for checking out another episode with roy and eric tyler's probably definitely going to be on the next one uh, he's, we're probably going to actually have him as a regular because he does a real good job yeah. keeping us on track. Yeah. So We tend to ramble. <laughs> a lot. <laughs> Anyways, guys, thanks so much for supporting us, and we'll see you in the next episode.